Hello everyone and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip from Hawkridge Systems. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to analyze the behavior and contact between components in a couple different assemblies, all without using any type of simulation or motion study. This is exceptionally helpful when working with assemblies where mates alone can't adequately illustrate the motion and contact between components. With that, let's take a look at a couple examples. I'd like to investigate this Geneva device a bit further in order to make sure it behaves as I expect, turning 90 degrees with each full rotation of the motor. The motion is simple enough, but there's no mate type available to represent this behavior. So how can I check for fit and function? The secret lies in the physical dynamics tool, which can be a bit difficult to find in the user interface if you're not familiar with it. It doesn't appear as its own tool in the drop-down menus, and it can't be found via command search. This is because, much like collision detection, physical dynamics is an option within the move component command, which can be found in the assembly tab of the command manager. Once you've activated the move component command, you'll find that clicking and dragging parts is no different than normal, and interferences and collisions are ignored. That's because by default, the standard drag option is enabled. To allow components to collide and interact with one another, choose the physical dynamics option. Physical dynamics is very easy to use and functions much like the collision detection option. However, instead of simply indicating where collisions happen, like collision detection, physical dynamics takes it one step further, applying a small force between the components to cause movement once the collision is detected, as seen here. This movement will propagate throughout the entire assembly and multiple components may move as a result of a chain reaction. Also, be aware of the options available once physical dynamics is activated. Using the These Components option instead of All Components can be beneficial for larger assemblies as it allows you to select components to investigate, often significantly improving performance when many components are present. If you use These Components, don't forget to click on Resume Drag after selecting the parts you're interested in, otherwise you'll just get a selection box when you go to drag a component. Additionally, the Dragged Part Only checkbox can be enabled to only analyze the contact between the components used specified, if you're using the These Components option, that is. Finally, the Sensitivity slider can be adjusted to change the frequency at which the program checks for collisions. Usually the default setting is OK here, but you may need to increase it for very complex or very small assemblies. One last thing. If your components are already interfering when you turn on physical dynamics, you'll get a notification on the screen once you begin to drag, and physical dynamics will be disabled. You'll simply need to move the components to a non-interfering position, re-enable physical dynamics, and try again. Looks like our Geneva device is doing its job quite nicely. Let's take a look at another quick example illustrating the importance of mates for physical dynamics, or more specifically, the importance of not having mates. In this example, we have a couple gears meshed together and made it up using a gear mate. Now this is fine for representing ideal motion and simplifying the assembly, but if you look closely you can see that the gears never actually touch one another, even with physical dynamics enabled. To verify that the gears are meshed properly and will make adequate contact, we need to disable this gear mate, which I've done with a simple configuration. Now, physical dynamics shows us what's really going on. We can see the play between the gears, and decide if our assembly tolerance is truly adequate. And that's all there is to it. With physical dynamics, you can investigate the true nature of motion and contact within your assemblies, all without the need for a motion study. That being said, if you'd like to take your motion analysis to the next level, and investigate quantities like reaction forces and velocities, or if you'd prefer to include gravity, inertia, friction, etc., consider taking a look at our introductory video to motion analysis in SOLIDWORKS, which has been linked below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We've got new SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip videos every week, and a huge library of existing videos answering your most common SOLIDWORKS questions. Finally, if you have any advice for using physical dynamics, make sure to let us know in the comments, and be sure to check us out at hawkridgesys.com for more information and some SOLIDWORKS training opportunities. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.